So I have tried out Emacs at least three times, and all of them have been at the behest of people in my community. They have all asked me to take a look at Emacs, and I've even gone so far as spending a week in Emacs a couple different times. And both of those times I had intentions of spending much more time in doing, and actually doing like a long-term review of my time in Emacs, but I've never actually made it past a week. And unfortunately, here we are again. This is the, like I said, this is the third time and it's the last time. So let's talk about my week or almost a week with Emacs. In the previous attempts, I was trying to replace Vim and I wanted to actually use a lot of the functions of Emacs. I wanted to try out org mode. I wanted to try out a lot of the like coding features and stuff like that, do some scripting in it and stuff. And, that, and I did that and Emacs is a fine tool for those functions. You can do those things just fine, just as like you can with them. And there's nothing wrong, inherently wrong with Emacs. Now, I have some problems with the amount of stuff that comes prepackaged with Emacs, specifically Doom Emacs. I think a lot of the stuff there just, it feels unnecessary. But I've come around to the idea that it's no different really than having a Vim configuration that has a lot of plugins. You know, most people who are using Vim use some kind of plugins to make their experience a little better. Either they have, they use prepackaged plugins from other developers or they use things that they've written themselves, whatever. They've enhanced Vim to do different things. That's part of the idea of building up a configuration of Vim or NeoVim or whatever. And almost everybody adds features to Vim. It's one of the things that makes Vim great is that you can extend it. And my previous argument of Emacs being bloated kind of flies in the face of being able to do basically the same thing with Vim because I do enable a lot of plugins with Vim and it could be argued that I'm basically just kind of doing the same thing that Emacs does out of the box. Now, there are obviously some exceptions for this. I'm talking about like the email client and the Tetris and stuff like that, but we won't really get into that. Those things are just kind of there for fan service, I guess. This time when I decided I was going to try Emacs, I decided that I was going to do it for myself. Like I was going, cause I'm like, I'm not a big, like I'm not a developer at all. And I don't do a lot of scripting, so using Emacs as something to do those things doesn't make a lot of sense because I just won't use it all that much because I don't do those things that often. But what I do do is write a lot. And over the last six months or so, I've transitioned to doing all of my writing in Vim. And I thought that it would be a interesting experience to try Emacs as a writing tool. So that's what I did this time. And I streamed setting it up this last Sunday and had a lot of help from the guys in the chat, including DT. And it wasn't a bad experience. So this whole week I've been using Emacs as my writing tool and I have some thoughts. So the first thing is that I did this time exactly what I did last time in that I recreated every single piece of functionality I have in Vim in Emacs. So basically what I was doing was recreating Vim. And I don't think that I gained anything from actually using Emacs. I was basically just using Vim with some added complexity because there were some key bindings that just were a little weird and were hard to change, but also that Everything in Emacs basically is a key chord, and while I love key chords, I do feel like they abandoned the ability to do just regular key bindings. Like, before you get to key chords, there should be some key bindings, and I'm sure there are, but for the most part, the tools that I was using were all attached to key chords, and that and kind of added an extra layer of complexity to getting to do certain things within Emacs. Not a big deal, something that I definitely got used to even after just a couple days, but it's something that I noticed. The biggest problem, as I said, was that I was just basically recreating Vim in Emacs, and I don't find that a useful thing. If I was just going to use Vim, I would just stick on using Vim. From what I could see in the things that I've done over the last week, Emacs doesn't really add anything that Vim can't do, except for one thing. And that is the ability to have text that is different sizes. That's something that you can't do in a terminal. It's something that you've never been able to do in a terminal, at least not, you know, without fudging it with like ASCII art or something. And the ability to have 
like markdown headers that are actually the size of the header. That's really cool. But even that isn't done by default. DT had to do that for me. And while it's a good experience, I found that it wasn't as necessary to my workflow as I thought it was going to be. I'm so used to just having color-coded headings. It didn't really matter to me that they were bigger. So the one thing that Emacs really had going for it, the ability to do multi-sized, you know, size text, isn't something that I found myself thinking all that useful despite what I thought going in. Like, I thought it was going to be, you know, much more helpful to my writing process, but it really wasn't. Outside of that, everything that I could do in Emacs, I was already doing in Vim. Now, I could see if I was n had never used Vim before, or if I wasn't such a Vim fanboy, and hadn't already built up my configuration file to the point where it has all of the plugins that I need, all the features and key bindings already where I need them to be. I could see if I wasn't at that point, and I had just started, you know, looking for a text editor of some kind, I could see Emacs being okay because it has a lot of the stuff that you need in order to make it a good writing tool built in right out of the box. It does markdown and stuff right out of the box. And adding packages and stuff like that is a little bit easier in that it's just like one line. There's no multiple places to put configuration or settings and stuff like that. It's just there. And that's really nice, but I've already done the work in them. Like, my configuration file is where I want it. There's no benefit for me, at least at the moment, to use Emacs because it does nothing more for me than what Vim already does, if that makes sense. So, my experiment with Emacs is over, and this is the last time. Like, I'm not trying it again. I don't... Uh, I say that like I've been talked into it now three times. I can't see myself being talked into it a third time or a fourth time. It's just there's nothing there for me. And it doesn't mean that I'm saying Emacs is bad. Like I don't think Emacs is bad at all. I think org mode is fantastic. And if you have a reason to use org mode, it's probably the best tool on Linux for you, right? It's so multifaceted and so capable of doing so many different things, it probably feels like a Swiss army knife to a caveman or something. Like, it just allows you to do so much stuff. And, like, you can write code snippets, you can create websites, you can do all this stuff in org mode. But for me, personally, org mode doesn't make any sense. Like, for my workflow, it wouldn't make any sense to write all of my stuff in org mode, translate it to Markdown or even into HTML and then move it into whatever format I need to use. It would just add a middleman that doesn't necessarily need to be there, because I can just write in Markdown and upload it to WordPress, which is where all of my stuff usually goes, and WordPress will automatically do the things that it needs to do in order to get it to the proper formatting and stuff. I don't need to add that extra middleman of org mode in order to do that. So... The one huge benefit that Emacs offers to everyone, not just writers, is org mode. And I won't use it. Like, it, it doesn't provide any function for me. It doesn't mean that I don't think it's cool. I do think it's cool. But it's just not something that I would have the need for. So I'm officially done with Emacs. And I don't think that it comes as a surprise to anyone that I didn't stick with it this time. I have learned more this time about configuring Emacs than I did the last time. I will say that I learned how to uh, add packages this time that I didn't know how to do that before. I learned how to create new key bindings and key chords. That's something that I didn't know how to do before. I've learned many different things this time than I didn't learn last time because I just used basically the IDE portion of Emacs. And this time I didn't use that at all. So I had to branch out in to order to make Emacs a little bit more of my own. And that was fun. Like, I had a good time learning those things. And I feel more now like I know why people use Emacs than I did before. So I can empathize with them a little bit more. And I feel more confident in my decision not to use Emacs than I did before. Because the last time I used Emacs, I didn't really dive into to org mode, like, hardly at all. And I didn't do any writing in it, which is still my primary function as a person because that's what I do every day. And this time, now that I've done that, I can feel like I've used it more to the point where at least I now know it's not for me. Like, it's just not. It's like 
Microsoft Windows may be for a lot of people, and a lot of people like it. Like, they have podcasts and fanboys and stuff like that, just like Linux does. But it's not for me. Like, it's just not. And we can talk about the reasons why it's not, but we don't really need to. Just know that it's not for me, but it can be for other people. It's the same thing with Emacs. A lot of people love Emacs, and that's fantastic for them. But for me, it's just really not for me. Vim is the thing that I like to use, and I think that I'm too attached to it to ever see any benefit in anything else. So that is it for this video. Just a quick one before I run out of time for the day. If you have any comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I would really love to hear from you. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, I would really appreciate that. We've had tremendous growth over the last couple of days, which is just absolutely blowing my mind and also kind of terrorizing me just a little bit. But anyways, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at LinuxCast. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or any of my other social media outlets, you can find those links in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'd like to thank my current patrons, Robert Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Ivan Tools, Steve A, Separate Linux, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TGB, Keith, Andy, Uncle Bonehead, Tri-Devil, Gary, Antoine, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martini, Ross, Eduardo, Art Center, Elliot, Mislav, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, Peter, Crucible, Dark, 6 Times, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.